Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where parents literally expect other people to give them their organs. Hi. Hello. So you know how much Jenna loved your cat bag, right? She saw a bag with cats on it in the store and really wanted it, but we didn't want to spend the money for it because it's not worth it. Do you think you can let her have yours or at least borrow it? She didn't forget about it. She will get tired of it eventually and then you can have it back. Are you serious? After what happened last time, it will be a no. Why did you take so long to respond earlier? And yes, I am serious. And that's really rude of you. She's a little girl. She just wants to play around with it. Why are you being like this? One, I was busy. Two, I don't care. Three, see number two. How heartless can you be? Just let her play with the stupid bag. You will not order me around. If she wants to play with the bag, then I will send you a link so you can purchase one yourself. I already told you I don't want to spend money on it. Okay, so how is that my problem? I bought it for myself. That bag is $2,000 and I will not have it ruined. Stop bothering me. So now you are saying that my daughter will ruin the stupid bag? What an evil, cruel jerk you are. You can afford it anyway. Just because I can afford a bag that I worked hard for doesn't mean that your daughter is entitled to it. You are her mother, you entitled stupid jerk. If she wanted something, then you buy it for her. Go shove a vacuum up your butthole and maybe it will be able to suck the stupidity out of you. Stop contacting me. F you jerk, I will be telling your grandparents about what a jerk you are. <laughs> Go ahead, they already know that I am in the right. Sorry sweetie, they aren't going to stop loving me. Hey, I just wanted to give all of my viewers out there a warning. After reading this post, I actually tried sticking a vacuum up my butthole to see if it would suck the stupidity out. It definitely sucked something out, but it didn't look like stupidity. So long story short, I may have to get butthole surgery again. Do not try this at home. Zero out of 10 would not recommend. So for some background, I'm 18, 6'1", and about 190 pounds. I've been trying to make my own business from unwrapping cars, vinyl wrap, interior and exterior detailing, and I was so lucky to have a guy in my area ask if I could unwrap his Ferrari, a 488 if anyone is curious. I gave him my price and estimated time it would take to do it. A few days, I'm mobile, so I gotta go to him. He agrees, so I start work. I get to my third day of work, removing adhesive from the wrap, and I'm working at the end of his driveway as that's where the son is making my life easier, and this daddy and daughter come walking down. ED is the dad, mid 40s in age, EG is the daughter, maybe 16 or 17. Entitled dad, nice car you got there. Thank you, I'm just working on it, so I'll tell the owner you like it. You got the keys to it? No, I don't have the car keys, sorry. Can I sit in it? It looks fun. No, it's not my car, so I can't let you sit in it, but points to my ratty 86 Toyota pickup. You can sit in that. That's my car. I don't mind if you sit in it. Ooh, that's disgusting. No way I'm sitting in that. Stands up from kneeling. Well, I can't let you sit in here. It's not my car. I couldn't let you sit in it if I wanted to let you. So she is just sitting in it. Not going to hurt it. I turn to face the dad. Big mistake. Yes, it can hurt the car. As I say that, I hear the door open and shut quickly. I turn to face the car just as she locks the door. I try to open it. No luck. Me knocking on the window. You need to get out right now. Back off before I make you. As he says this, I start my way around to the passenger door to try that one. Dad sees this and quickly pushes me over. Door unlocks and he jumps in too. I get up and honk my truck's horn to let the owner know something is up. He comes out cause well, it's an expensive car. As he does, I call the police cause it's obvious that they aren't going to get out anytime soon. The owner tries to talk to them, but they both mock him. I tell the operator that people are trying to steal a Ferrari. That got their attention. Four or five cops come up hella fast, code three, lights and sirens for those who don't know. Entitled dad and entitled girl don't seem scared by them. The cops get the key from the owner and they try to unlock the door and open it as quickly as possible. They just keep locking it with no luck. It took lots of talking and lots of trying. They stop trying for like five minutes and surprise them by unlocking it and opening the door. Suddenly, they start screaming and kicking. The dad somehow gets away from the officer and runs at me. I try to defend myself, but he gets me in the gut really good and knocks me to the ground. 
The officers get control of him and make sure I'm fine and asked if I wanted to press charges. That was a fast yes, as he has wasted over an hour of work and I felt like he destroyed my gut, along with a bunch of other charges that he got per request of the owner and all the laws he and his daughter broke. This happened about a week ago and I'm feeling much better and got a ride in the Ferrari as a thank you. The entitled dad and the entitled girl, I'm not sure what happened to them, but I'm sure it wasn't good. So I looked up the price of a Ferrari 488 and these suckers go for about $400,000. If you bought a car worth almost half a million and an entitled dad and his daughter jumped in and were mocking you from inside, what would you want to do to those two people? Let me know down in the comments because I'm imagining for a lot of you it would involve some broken bones. This is a true story in China. When Entitled Mother had her second daughter, she decided that she doesn't want her. You see, while the family was given special permission to have two children, as opposed to the one child policy, they wanted a son. And this extra girl is just an inconvenience taking up the precious spot for a boy. So they abandoned her up without hesitation. The next year, Entitled Mom got pregnant with a boy who was spoiled to death in the family. The girl ended up with an adoptive father more than 300 kilometers away from her original village. He and his wife had three pregnancies, but all ended up as a miscarriage, so they adopted the girl, but divorced soon after because of the stress that came with the adoption. For 16 years, he had been raising his adopted daughter on his own. The man is just a crab farmer and is nowhere rich, but he loved the girl as his own daughter. They were living a quiet and happy life together until one day Entitled Mom turned up. Turns out the son got leukemia and needed bone marrow, and no one in the family had a match. So they turned to the daughter they abandoned 16 years ago, hoping that she would be a match. The father felt sorry for the 14-year-old boy. He agreed to take the girl to a hospital for a test, but he was afraid that the girl would know she was abandoned for her gender. So he made the entitled mom promise to not tell her that she's adopted. The girl was a match and agreed to the procedure, under the impression that she was donating for a stranger. The adoptive father then asked for a bond for the girl's health. In the beginning, he was misled into thinking that it would be as simple as donating blood. However, when the doctors told him that donating bone marrow is a risky procedure, he was worried that if there is any complication, he won't have any means to save his daughter. The money would be returned to Entitled Mom if the girl remains complication-free when she's married. Entitled Mom refused. Then the father said, don't worry about the money, but the surgery needs to be near where he is living so he can take care of his daughter and work. Entitled Mother refused again, saying that it would be more expensive for them. The father hesitated, and the Entitled Mother freaking exploded. Entitled Mom, her husband, and their eldest daughter marched to the girl's school right after class, stopped the car the girl was in, pulled open the door, grabbed the girl by her arm, and started yelling at her that she was adopted. They are her real family, and she needs to save her younger brother. The teachers had to physically intervene to stop them from taking her away. A bystander called the police. Even in the police station, Entitled Mother kept pressuring the girl for her bone marrow. The girl was in shock after knowing that she was adopted in such a violent way and cried for a whole night. This put her into a lot of psychological stress. The next day, Entitled Mother printed out hundreds of open letters calling both the girl and her father by name, saying that they are cold-blooded and the girl, in particular, is ignorant and doesn't understand morals. She even brought up the fact that the adoptive father experienced miscarriages to insult him. She emphasized that the boy is the girl's biological brother. She bolded that just to put more pressure on the girl. She put this around the village the girl is living in, all the way to around the girl's school, so both of them can't even go back to their home. When she was asked about this later, she said she didn't think about what that would do to the girl. She even went to the village council and said that the girl is rightfully hers and she will take the girl back and make her donate her bone marrow. Of course, she was told that the girl was legally adopted, so she has no rights over her, and if she does anything like that, it would be kidnapping. She started interfering with the girl on her way to and from school. A teacher had to drive the girl to and from school for her safety, and they even got assaulted by Entitled Mother's relative for their trouble. The Entitled Mother later went on to a television program, probably wanting to bully the girl and her father into giving up her body rights. She got ripped apart on live TV. Later, they found another match on the donor database, so the boy is fine. The thing is, if she had been less entitled and cruel to the girl, she would have already donated her bone marrow. She could have doomed her son to death because of this. This is the most entitled parent we have ever seen. This isn't give me your phone. This isn't give me your car. This is give me your actual 
organs. My church has a huge finished basement and a huge kitchen and common area, usually used for after church coffee, donuts, and big community events. Underneath the back stairs going into the storage space is a little one person bathroom meant for mainly people with disabilities and or injuries so they don't have to go all the way back up the stairs. On to the story. About 8 months ago I had screwed up my knee pretty bad by landing very wrong on our trampoline and was on crutches with a metal brace for a while. So during one of our breakfast fundraisers I was sat at the end of the food tables handing out silverware. This is important because everyone who came through saw and greeted me, including our entitled mom. I decided I had to use the restroom, so I temporarily switched with my godmom and hobbled my tall ass over to the bathroom. Everything was fine for the first two minutes of me being in there until someone knocks on the door. Dialogue approximately as follows. Hello, I'll be out in a minute. All right. Mind you, I can hear her child whining about having to pee and I recognize his voice. This is important later. A couple more minutes pass and I'm just starting to get up when she knocks again. I'm just getting up, one moment please. Can you hurry up? My son has to pee and we've been waiting too long. Ma'am, there's bathrooms upstairs. This one is meant- I am not gonna walk up all those stairs, literally one flight, to have him use that filthy bathroom. They're clean daily. At this point I have my pants on and I started to wash my hands. The bathroom is small enough for me to stand without crutches, the walls and sink close enough for holding onto if necessary. I sigh, not really wanting to deal with this any longer. Apparently washing my hands was a no-no because I hear the child whine again and then comes, that water is making him have to pee even more, you are torturing my child, get out here now or I'm getting the priest. I turned off the water and went for the paper towels. Ma'am, like I said earlier, when you rudely interrupted me, this bathroom is for the disabled. I know for a fact that you and your child are perfectly mobile. Then why are you in there? You don't sound disabled. What does that even mean? That was the last thing out of her mouth before I opened the door, my crutches back under my armpits. Well, I sure feel disabled. Entitled mom's eyes widened, seeing my brace and crutches, and she grabbed her kid and bolted for the stairs. I didn't see her for the rest of the morning and she still avoids me at mass to this day. It still makes me laugh. Yeah guys, you really can't judge if someone is disabled or not based on their voice alone. I mean, I had my butthole ripped off in a freak vacuum cleaner accident, but you wouldn't be able to tell that from my voice. When my daughter was 11, the only thing she wanted for her birthday was some heavy duty rope so she and her brother could play in the woods with it and do things like make tree swings. My husband and I went to Home Depot and bought her something like 15 feet of rope that ended up costing about 50 bucks. We wanted her to have some nice rope. It was an unusual thing for a little girl to ask for her birthday, but we wanted her to be able to use it the way she was imagining so we didn't mind spending more than we'd expected getting this rope. At the time, we lived in this enormous planned community that had hundreds of acres of natural areas and parks filled with big old live oaks, so plenty of trees for everyone in the community to enjoy in whatever way they pleased. One day, my daughter, our son, and two friends of theirs took the rope to a nearby park and looped it around some tree branches to swing off of. They were minding their own business in the park when this little boy of about four approached them watching them swinging. They asked if he wanted to try but he said his mom wouldn't let him. They said okay and went back to swinging. Pretty soon the little boy's mom came over and told them they needed to untie the rope and leave the park because her son was too young to swing and it wasn't fair that he had to watch them have fun while he couldn't. Now for safety's sake I had trained my kids that they didn't have to do anything that a strange adult told them to do and if a stranger asked them to do anything they should give the adult my phone number and tell them to call me, which is what my daughter did. The entitled mom snorted and said, I don't need to talk to your mother. She then walked back to where she and some other mothers had been having a picnic and got a small knife, then came back and cut my daughter's rope off the tree. My children were terrified that this wacky lady came at them with a knife and cut the rope and came flying home on their bikes extremely upset. When they told me the story I was so pissed. I'd been in a car wreck a few weeks prior and had a broken pelvis. I was just to the point where I was able to walk okay using a walker but I wasn't supposed to be driving yet but I was so angry I put my walker in my van and drove to the park looking for the woman my children had described. She was still there and was very smug and not at all sorry. I introduced myself and told her I was the mother of the kids with the rope. She told me the same story the kids had and admitted she had cut the rope because her son wasn't old enough to swing. I was astounded. I believed what my kids were saying to me but I'd assumed the mother would spin it that she was worried that my kids were hurting the tree or something. I told her, you're going to need to pay for the rope you destroyed. That was my daughter's birthday present and you had no right to cut it. She said, I don't think so, I'm not paying for anything. 
I wasn't sure what to do at this point, but I asked her for her name and address and she stupidly gave it to me. She kind of laughed and said, sure, I'll give you my name. I've got nothing to hide. I hobbled back to my van and went home, seething with anger. I called my husband and he immediately said, call the police, which I did. The policeman came within about 20 minutes since we lived in a pretty small town and I told him the story. He said, that's destruction of property and she can't do that. She lived within walking distance of my house, so he drove up there to talk to her and was back within a few minutes saying, she says she'll pay for the rope now or you can press charges and I'll arrest her. It's your choice. I was pretty surprised to hear that she could get arrested over destroying 50 bucks of rope because that really hadn't occurred to me. I thought maybe she'd get a ticket or something. When it comes to my kids, I'm a mother tiger, and by this point, I wanted this lady to spend a few hours in the county jail, but I didn't want to be unreasonably vindictive either. I asked the cop what he thought I should do, but he said he couldn't make the choice for me. I called my husband again, and he said, Press charges. You already gave her an opportunity to pay for the rope, and she didn't want to. When I told the cop I wanted to press charges, he smiled and said, That's the right choice. You gave her a chance to pay. He told me he was going back to her house to arrest her. I assume he did, though I never heard anything further about it. We ended up having to buy my daughter some new rope ourselves, but it was worth it to put that entitled mother in her place. Not only was this woman so entitled that she thought it was okay for her to cut the rope, but she was so entitled she thought there would be no consequences for telling someone that you wronged your name and address Listen, r slash entitled parents, I'd like to introduce you to my good old buddy, r slash pro revenge. All right, everyone, that was r slash entitled parents. And as I said before, I really want to know how you would handle the situation where two people break into your $400,000 Ferrari and refuse to leave. If you were in that guy's situation, what would you do? Let me know down in the comments.